Although I live in the slime and muck of the dark age, although I stumble in the thick black fog of materialism, the tradition of meditation is waning and we are drunk with spiritual pride. He had an urgency about him. He never gave up on anyone, on showing us the full potential of our humanity. He said to me that he felt that he was a critical point in his life. He said, at this particular point, I'm on the verge of becoming enlightened. And when people get to this point, they either go crazy or they attain realization. Which, of course, made me feel a little bit anxious having just married him. Everything he did was with the intention of waking people up. He said, in order to create an enlightened society, you have to change the culture. And in order to change the culture, you have to change the art. And uh, he said that for his Buddhist meditators to be able to speak about liberation of mind to America, they would have to be poets. The poetry comes from an expression of one's phenomenal world in the written form. It could be either prose or poetry form. <clears throat> it's not so much if, from a Buddhist point of view, it's that uh, you write good poetry particularly, but how you your thought patterns become uh, elegant. That you see a phenomenal world is, uh, as a process, stages, as a view. In the Buddhist situation, that uh, everything is a learning situation, so that the teacher can share their sense of journey with the student, and the student can share their sense of journey with the teacher rather than the professors or teachers have stopped and they have received their PhD degree and after that they don't have further learning to do. So the idea is mutual exploration. And uh, obviously the uh, purpose of the whole thing is to develop some sense of sanity. Over the last 40 years, we've had lots of teachers, meaningful teachers. One of them, Choi Gun Trungpa, told us as a teaching to march directly into disappointment. Well, the impact then was being captured by the seeming absurdity of it. like. Who wants to march directly into disappointment? I'd rather be happy. And yet somewhere deep inside, I knew there was something true about it because I was avoiding going into my disappointments fully. And basically what started to come up was I was disappointed because I couldn't connect with certain friends in certain ways at times, or I couldn't connect with clients in certain ways at times, or I couldn't connect with my family in certain ways at certain times. When I go to parties, I couldn't connect with a lot of people <laughs> a lot of the time. And so what was it that was disappointed? And so I started to get deeper glimpses then of this desire to connect. This desire for my heart to actually connect with itself and to connect with others. And so that then it was really a wake-up call. And so the disappointment itself leads to a deeper kind of questioning, which is, how do I care for myself in the face of disappointments? So the disappointment actually has led to a certain kind of inquiring as to how I can nurture or find courage inside myself. Sometimes it's led to a prayerfulness because I'm in situations where I feel disappointed that I get a, a test result medically and I want to find as much peace or acceptance as possible so it'll lead to a prayer. May I find 
as much peace you know, and acceptance as possible. In a given moment, how does one march directly into disappointment? Breathing, you slow down the breath, and you take great interest in the experience of that sensation of the heart sinking. And you slow down enough to where there's a sound that sounds something like, oh. So you hear the tone of, oh and you allow the breath to go slowly and sink deeply like and you stay with it for a few minutes or longer and I ask you as my friend please support me to be more disappointed rather than help me get out of it so it's both an internal experience which I value because I recognize that if I feel the disappointment I'm going to be able to discover what it is that I really wanted underneath or what it is I really want underneath that's sacred to me and that can allow me to find my own internal resources and it can also allow me to ask my friends or counselors or what, whoever it is that's going to help me, do you have any suggestions? Once our mind and our understanding gets it, that disappointment is really our friend. If we cognitively get that disappointment is a paradox and that disappointment is the key or one of the major keys, it supports us to go inside and I want to experience disappointment, not because I'm a masochist, but because I love myself and I want to discover the way that I can really find the nurturance or the source of healing. You should know, um, probably this will uh, discourage you for life, but in the Va Vajrayana tradition, uh, when you really start working closely with a teacher, that teacher becomes the greatest troublemaker in your life. The Trumpa Rinpoche is uh, famous for uh, a quote where he said, uh, the job of the spiritual friend is to insult you. And if you ask why that is so, it's because uh, in order to become a completely loving person, a flexible person, you have to see where you're hookable. You have to see where your shempa arises so that you can work with it. So in the Vajrayana tradition, there's actually a, um, a whole practice and teaching that you can do, which is called heightened neurosis, <laughs> where you actually, uh, the situation is created by certain practices you do, where your um, neurosis gets heightened to you. And the idea is if you don't see it, if you don't first see where you're hookable and where you get provoked, with a complete honesty and directness, without guilt, but just a straight look at where you get stuck, uh, then um, uh, you're always going to have that blind spot and it's always going to be there to drag you down. So if you really want liberation, you really want freedom, you need people around who are going to be provoking you to show you where it is that you still have work to do. Now, I love this teaching, and I actually see things this way, which isn't to say that I like these people any better than you do, but I actually see the value of what they are showing me about myself, no matter what their intention is. He freed himself from suffering, not from pain, but from suffering. And I believe I can also do that, and I believe everybody can also do that. So he's like the role model of someone who didn't give up on himself, didn't give up on the world, didn't give up on other people, and freed himself from suffering, this unnecessary suffering that Shantideva refers to as like, we shrink from suffering but love its causes.